I didn't even plan a script for this because I just really want to know your journey. I know the theme of you is for the love. So can you just tell me the love you have for anything in your life? For the love came from a scripture. 1 Corinthians 16, chapter 16, verse 14. So it says, do all things in love. Mm -hmm. It kind of came about during the pandemic. You know, we're stuck in the house. I found myself being inactive and I could only imagine what the kids in my neighborhood, the kids back at home in North, like I could imagine what they were doing and what they were feeling. I just wanted to give all the love that, you know, I have to give to this world um, through basketball and that's what I've been doing recently. We're gonna get to the kids a little bit later, but I do know that you're one of the people I look at and I'm like, you love the game, but the game hasn't always loved you. So let's walk through that, that journey. Tell us what, what are some setbacks? What are some times where you were like, this ain't love? I want to say it probably started for me in high school, all state freshman year, uh, all through high school, New Jersey player of the year, um, championships and all those things. Um, but got to my junior year in high school, um, was playing in a tournament during the summer and I suffered an ACL and meniscus tear, um, which sidelined side me and I didn't get my senior year. So I wanna say that was my first like big punch and big taste of adversity from basketball. Was lucky to have a scholarship offer from the University of Maryland. Uh, go Terps, go Terps, you know? Go Terps. Um, and again, had to go through the same process of just transitioning from being a high school student mm -hmm. to a college student itself is hard. So you add the factor that you're kind of going to school for basketball. Um, it's just a whole different ball game. So that transition and then coming off a major injury, um, my freshman year was a little rocky. Um, but when that sophomore year came, I felt like I was back to my old self. Junior year rose around, sixth game of the season against Nebraska, probably having the best game of my life. Uh, in the second half, I go down with an ACL injury that year. So sideline once again, um, but for me, this time was definitely more mentally challenging than the first time. So what were some ways you were able to stabilize yourself? Because you've had it before, but you knew that like, hey, you know, there's the comeback and, you know, setback, comeback, that, that whole thing. But when it happens again, that's like another blow. So how are you able to mentally prepare and say, hey, I'm not, I'm not finished just yet? Honestly, I don't think there's a lot of ways that you can mentally prepare for an injury. Like I said, I knew the process, so I knew that there was definitely going to be physical pain involved, uh, but also getting back to, you know, thinking about the game as a whole, um, not being scared, right? Um, understanding that there's a chance that I might potentially not come back as the same player or my body might not react the same. And so I think those, you know, doubts and worries and, you know, that anxiety comes with any injury and you're trying to fight back from it. Um, but what did help was having supportive teammates, um, good friends, I have family around to keep motivating me. As much trauma and injury that has occurred, you've had some great success. So what's one moment that really stands out to you that you were like, this is fulfilling to me, this means something to me? I wanna say probably the year I came back from my ACL. Which time? The second time in college, for sure. Our first, our first final four. Mm -hmm. um, I want to say that that was one moment that I could, I'm never going to forget. I struggled all year with playing time, consistency, mentally. Uh, our team was a little inconsistent at the time. Um, we had all the pieces, but we could never get over the hump. Uh, and we kind of got punched in the mouth. I really wasn't getting a lot of minutes during that time. And um, when it was time for that NCAA tournament, you know, light to, light to come on, um, I shined in any way I could. I could. What, in what ways do you shine? I feel like um, I'm great at uplifting my teammates with my words. Um, I'm very intentional. Um, I understand that you know, everybody responds differently, right? To different ways you speak to them or just listening. I feel zen. Yeah, right? <laughs> I understand that we all need grace. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think that's that's what I bring. And uh, like I said, I bring 
this love not only for this game, but just for people. And so it's easy for me to see my teammates be successful and, and feel like I'm a part of that success. What's something that you tell your kids, because we have the For the Love and that's giving back to the community and you know what they've been through, you've been that kid. What do you tell them? I tell them to try to definitely enjoy the journey, right? To be present, right? Don't think about the next shot or don't think about, you know, the next team you're gonna be on. Enjoy this practice right here, you know, and have fun. You know, you're supposed to use this time to build relationships and, you know, build a foundation in regards to basketball, build this, this love. For me, it starts from that age. Just telling them that I'm here mm -hmm. for anything they might need on and off the court and just, you know, pushing them in the right way and letting them know that anything that they, they think about doing in life, like they can achieve it with education, God, and hard work. Your hard work got you to the pros, right? So we're fast forwarding. We made, you know, training camp for New York. We made training camp for Seattle. We had some lucrative deals overseas. What made you, first of all, take those deals overseas? And then what made you step away from the biggest deal? Well, I um, always wanted to play professionally. When things didn't work out in training camp, Obviously, the next best things for women's basketball is to go overseas. Still very competitive. My thought process at that time was like, okay, well, I'm just gonna keep fighting my way up, keep showcasing, you know, the gift that God has given me, representing my family well, and, and I'm just gonna go out and, and say yes to, to the opportunities I would get for uh, basketball. Mm-hmm, and then you said, okay, I'm gonna stay home, why? <sighs> I felt like um, for myself, I was experiencing a sense of losing my identity. I felt like everything that I was doing was evolving myself with basketball. And, you know, to my point, telling my kids, I felt like I was always chasing something. I felt like I was never satisfied. Um, <laughs> While I was on teams overseas, right, I'm thinking about my stats while I'm playing because I know that, you know. Like somebody's looking. Somebody's looking. I feel like I didn't enjoy all the accomplishments, you know, from starting from the Final Four, right? It was, that was awesome, but I don't feel like I, I took it in because I was always thinking about the next thing. To your point, I just decided that I needed to step away and, and get back to to myself and you know who was Lauren outside of basketball. We're gonna get into who is Lauren, but first, why Athletes Unlimited? Because if you're if you're competing so hard and you're thinking about your stats, why why come back? Well, now I have a whole different mindset. Um, it's been three years since I played professional basketball. I'm now a coach, college coach at Rutgers Newark. Um, I have a lot of boys and girls from ages five to professional. Um, a lot of kids at home from my hometown that I train and that I mentor and I'm representing them here. And uh, they admire me so much. They admire me so much and respect me so much. And um, I feel like they're learning a lot from me, but at the same time, I'm, I'm getting as much as I'm putting out in, into them. And, um, they were so supportive of this, and I was doing all women's runs in the summertime mm -hmm. also, and I seen how many girls would come out every Sunday to compete, and it was fun building that community, giving them that safe space that I found my love back for the game. I'm using this present moment right now, and I'm just so grateful for the opportunity to be here. Mm -hmm. And so now I'm playing with no pressure, I'm playing freely because I'm just enjoying this moment. Not me over here just like zinning out. I'm like, what, what do I ask you next? No, I'm just kidding. But you mentioned Lauren Mincy outside of the court and I, I, I know you personally, but I, I always affiliate you for your passion for the game. So I'm asking you, who is Lauren Mincy outside of basketball? <sighs> Look, I'm a fun girl. <laughs> you don't say. Um, well, I feel like a lot of the qualities that, you know, people see on the court or my teammates feel on the court is who I am overall. So um, I'm definitely very family oriented. I love spending time with my family, my friends and my loved ones. Ultimately, like I said, I, I love 
being there to support, you know, everyone and building up my community and you know, up, uplifting people with my words. I feel like that's my purpose, you know, is to uplift and I want to try to do that in any way I can. I do affiliate you with music and I, it's funny because I've been interested in how basketball mu and music coincide. So in your opinion, how do you think the basketball and music intersect? Basketball, music, and let's say fashion, mm -hmm. especially now. It's like it's, culture. Yeah, it's like yeah. culture. It's, it's a part of the culture. So for me, music and basketball really coincides because basketball is about rhythm. Mm -hmm. It just gives me a sense of peace, um, a little rhythm, right? Um, moves. Yeah, just, you a, just, a, just a little, little, just a little, 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 little bit. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I think just music is just a big part of, of, of basketball. And I, I think, you know, in a way, music tells, you know, the story of basketball. I imagine that after all this is over, you were, you have already touched a lot of people, but you, you were touched the masses. So what do you want to leave the world with? I want the world to love more. I think, you know, that's the central part of why we're all here and, you know, what's going to bring us together. And also, it's okay to start over and it's okay to make mistakes. And uh, I think if you intentionally live this life and stick to the morals you set for your own self and, you know, be authentically you, that, you know, you can experience a peace and a joy that you probably wouldn't experience any other way. Now me getting emotional over here. We're going to cut this before, <laughs> you know? I'm like, look, I love you, and you're not going to make me cry. <laughs> look, thank you, Lauren, for coming through. Of course, of course, of course. Are we precious? That's my girl.